Flaming June is the masterpiece of Frederick Layton, one of the most eminent British artists of the Victorian era. It was painted within months of his death and is a distillation of his lifelong preoccupation with formal beauty. The painting comes to the Frick on a generous loan from the Museo de Arte de Ponce in Puerto Rico. Founded some 50 years ago to bring European art to the Caribbean, the Ponce Museum holds one of the most important collections of Victorian painting outside of the British Isles. Flaming June is the highlight of the collection. It was purchased by the museum's founder, Luis Ferre, from a London gallery in 1963, at a time when Victorian art had fallen out of fashion. Frederick Layton produced a large body of work of paintings, drawings, and sculpture, and served as the longtime president of the Royal Academy. He often took his subject matter from classical and Renaissance sources. We see him here in a self-portrait against a backdrop of the Parthenon frieze, wearing the medal of the president of the Academy. In Flaming June, an idealized figure appears within an imaginary classical setting, wearing a semi-transparent gown. Although lost in dream, her body is charged with energy. The composition keeps our eye moving around the figure, from the top of her head, stepping down through the angled elbow and knees, and up again through her curved back to the head. The pose, in fact, looks back to Michelangelo's famous tomb sculpture of night, made for the Medici Chapel in Florence. In both, the figure is asleep, her head bowed down, and the legs are sharply bent, with a knee jutting up, and the thigh elongated. Variations of this pose appear in other works that Leighton painted at this time. In creating Flaming June, he posed a nude model in his studio, trying out different positions that matched his mental image. Here, the model's arm is extended behind her. And now it is brought back in, rounding the figure in on herself in a more compact shape. Leighton abstracted the body as he went along in search of the most expressive form, now elongating the length of the right leg. Once satisfied with the pose, he then drew the figure in sheer drapery that both reveals and conceals the body and adds movement through the fluttering folds. In his final drawing for the painting, he brought the figure and setting together within the square format he had chosen for his canvas, a perfect foil to the circular figure. In this tiny oil sketch on view at the Frick alongside the painting, Leighton made another critical step, introducing the brilliant orange of her dress, one of the most striking features of the work, set off by the darker tones of the drapery strewn over the bench. Color brings into focus other parts of the composition, a bouquet of oleanders on a ledge just above her, and a glimpse of shining sea, as well as the scalloped edge of an awning, which is replaced by a straight edge in the final painting. A master of form, color, and design, Leighton brings all of the elements of his art together in this enduring, sensual image, the purest expression of his aesthetic ideals. This photograph shows the work after its completion in Leighton's London studio, now a museum. The work is shown adjacent to some of the preparatory drawings and surrounded by other paintings of single female figures painted around the same time. Now in the Frick's Oval Room through September 6, this magnificent painting and its preparatory sketch can be seen alongside the Frick's full-length portraits by James McNeil Whistler, Leighton's contemporary, and another towering figure in the London art world in the late 19th century. The exhibition is made possible by the Peter J. Sharp Foundation and Mr. and Mrs. Juan A. Sabater. For more information, please visit our website at frick.org. Mm -hmm.